Hey, what's guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're gonna try to clean all of this mess here up that looks like a crazy scientist fire hazard probably about to happen from looking like this into something like this. So this is an EG4 six cabinet battery rack with bus bars. And I have two of them, one right here. There's another one behind this rack over here. Uh, we're gonna try to see if we can fit all of this mess into those two racks, okay? So this rack is a rack that we got or acquired, I think it was off like Facebook Marketplace when we weren't too serious about the solar thing. We just wanted to at least, you know, DIY, just tinker into it. And I think we picked up this rack here for almost like, I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. And the main reason it wasn't selling or we were able to get it for so cheap is because this is actually a 24 inch rack which, uh, you know, we're, we weren't really too sure at the time. And then we got it and then we're like, hey, this thing doesn't fit, right? So what we did was we actually just converted it in a way to a 19 inch rack by sticking tubifos, right, in the racks and then padding out this rail, right, to fit the 19 inch uh, racks here, right? So this is just some makeshift $20 rack thing, doesn't have bus bar, so it's kind of just tied in this way, even though it's a diagonal hatch pattern, you know, it's probably got its own share of issues. But the point is, we're gonna try to clean all of this mess up into these nice EG4 battery racks with bus bars. So let's get to it. All right, so when you get the EG4 battery rack, there is a box that is zip tied to the inside of the rack. Let's go see what's inside. Already cut it open. So it looks like you get four of these uh, feet here. And they are pretty much what you, as you would imagine, super heavy duty casters. Uh, we can bring you in up closer and take a look at it, but there are four of them and the four of them both, all four of them seem to be identical. They all swivel. There's ball bearings on them, right? So there's four, as you would imagine, um, one for each side. You get a key that goes to the cabinet door, right? You get all the screws that are designed to be used with uh, the feet, the casters, and you get four glands. So these glands I would imagine are the glands that are designed to be used uh, with the rack and in terms of like where you're gonna pull the cables out of and stuff like that just to protect them. But in case you are wondering what you get with the battery rack, you get four glands, four of these, and keys with all the mounting hardware you need. All right, so let's take a closer look at what you get, right? And as we said earlier, there's four of these glands. Looks like these are PG-13, and there's no other specs on them besides being PG-13 and then also being CE for Chinese export, right? Uh, PG-16, looks like there's something on here about 30, but who knows, right? There you go. Uh, like I said, here are the four feet that you get. Looks like it is called Foot Macer, right? CE Chinese export. It looks like this thing says uh, max 2450N, probably Newtons. This is GD-60. So here you go, right? It's a uh, 1GTG do kind, whatever that means, okay? And as you can see on here, there's ball bearings right here. Uh, you get a bunch of these ball bearings. Here's a little red thing that seems to be a little bushing type deal. And this is a Foot Macer G D O K I N G, right? So this is obviously designed to be mounted to the bottom of the uh, rack. And as you would imagine, these have to be super heavy duty. Um, as you can imagine that each battery weighs, you know, a lot. And then there's gonna be the weight of six batteries plus the rack, right? And the bus bar. So, you know, four of these should be able to handle. I can tell you just by picking this up, this is probably one of the heaviest uh, heavy duty casters I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I have seen ones that are bigger than this that are designed for several tons, right? So, uh, but you know, on a rack, probably these are probably the best ones we've seen for a rack. And as I said, you get all four of them. They seem to be exactly the same. So just in case you're worried about how the weight is distributed at the bottom on the rack, you can see here, the rack is pretty much just solid like any other type, uh, server type rack as you would imagine, right? But what they did was they welded additional uh, four squares on each uh, corner here. So it's not a full weld, but they did weld maybe an inch in each direction, right? So there's an inch welded here, inch welded here, 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 and here. It's not as good, obviously, as if you would have welded the entire thing, right? But it's still better that they reinforce the weight on this thick 
uh, metal square here across four sides, right? That way, the uh, weight is actually distributed across this chassis frame here and not this thin uh, sheet metal here, right? So you can imagine it's actually distributed across this entire frame and this sheet metal, right? So one, two, three, four. Yes, if I were to go ahead and say inspect the welds, I would say some of these could be much better. Like this one here looks like maybe half an inch versus an inch. This one here is like three quarters of an inch. This one here is like an inch, right? So maybe I know it's probably obviously human welded, but the point is that it's still better than nothing, all right? But the welds pretty much aren't the greatest. Would I have loved to have the whole thing? Most definitely. But would that probably cost more? Probably. So you're gonna have to figure out where to draw the line. The point is, if you want uh, this rack and try to figure out how the weight is gonna come down on it, that's how it's gonna work. So I have four screws on each one of them and it looks like they did include one extra one. Maybe you lost one, dropped one, stripped one, or who knows what the deal is. But they do include one extra and I actually like it when manufacturers do that because, you know, if this type of manufacturer that gives you the exact number of small parts and they know a lot of people are gonna lose them, call them the support, request another one, all kinds of crazy stuff, it's always good. They just take an extra step to give you at least one or two extra parts, right? In this case, one extra screw, a good thing. All right, so this right here is G4 six uh, battery rack kind of put into place. We are resting it on uh, the casters. We actually protrude two of the feet out, so it's just kind of sitting there. We have removed the door, okay? So the door is grilled or has ventilation holes right now, just in this one slot. Uh, it is removable, as you can see right here. This one pin you pull down and it slides out. The bottom pin is permanently fixed, so it's not really a problem, you just kind of Pull that out, lift the door up right there, and you should be pretty good to go. As you can see right here, one, two, three, four, five, six battery slots. Each side of the battery has four screws that come in, one, two, three, four. So there's four on that side and four on this side. It really helps prevent the battery from moving forward. Although it's secured in with the rack gears, I don't, can't imagine you're gonna have too much struggle unless you're probably going through some type of like earthquake zone during an earthquake, right? So uh, if you count the number of screws, that's like eight per battery and there's like six if you have all six batteries so that's a lot of screws i would not manually do that with the hand screwdriver in case you know you just want to have fun all day so get yourself a screw gun get that going as you can see here um the bus bar is here it is encased in this little uh plastic runway and there is a, a negative side here as you can see that side is black and a positive side here this side here is red uh, they both seem to be identical uh, there's a few parts that have heat shrink tube on it. Uh, I believe that's probably to insulate this pin right here uh, or this uh, bolt right here as you can see right here to where it connects or secures the bus bar to the rack and you know I'm not sure if that's the only thing but hopefully there's a little bit more than just that insulation because you know we're just purely relying on that heat shrink for that insulation right there right so like I said negative side positive side it ends up being pretty much exactly the same the back door right there does swing open um, this way right so that uh, cable is grounding the door to the chassis you do want to uh, ground the chassis to the protected earth to ground uh, when you get a chance so we, we haven't installed anything here yet but we will do that um, this front door is also connected with this ground wire here and as you can see you know it's a pretty standard battery rack uh, if you want to look closer at the welds take a look see these welds right here it's a pretty small weld but you know the welds are pretty strong could they be thicker or more full or complete right they could be but you know, at this price point, you can't really complain too much. If you're a welder and you wanted to, you know, sand off some of the paint and get better welds going, go do that. But I can't imagine most people having too many problems with uh, the welds here, right? So, like I said, uh, there's two holes on each side. Uh, they do come with four glands. So when you do want to connect up the wires to the bus bars, you probably want to do that in a cross diagonal pattern, which meaning you know, just take ones coming out of here and put it on this side right here and take these coming out of here and put it up 
here. That way you reduce the current sharing issues that you may get. And this door does indeed lock, as you can see right here. And it does come with two keys and you can twist lock. All right, so check this out, guys. I just ran into a huge issue and it's definitely my fault because I did not check the dimensions, right? I just operated under the assumption that uh, the server rack would accommodate most server rack batteries, but it's not true in this case, right? So this right here is the EG4 server rack with the bus bars. This is the AO lithium battery, obviously. Let's go take a measurement here. So from ear to ear or shelf to shelf, it's gonna be about six and five eighths, right? That's from the bottom of one shelf to the bottom of the next shelf, right? So just say the space between them is gonna be about six and a half. Okay, so you don't wanna exceed six and a half or you can't physically exceed six and a half inch uh, server rack batteries, you know, the, the uh, thickness or the height of it, right? So uh, you probably don't wanna exceed, I would say just to be able to fit it in there, about six and a quarter is probably gonna be the maximum size battery you wanna fit in there, right? So if you take a measurement of this AO lithium battery, right, it's about seven and a sixteenth, right? Um, seven and a sixteenth, it may actually be seven, but I'm just gonna say seven and a sixteenth, which is obviously more then six and a half. So these AO lithium batteries, several rack batteries will not fit in this EG4 uh, rack. That's a little bit of a bummer because you know, obviously I'm trying to fit it in there, but we're gonna have to figure something else out. All right, you guys, so that's a little bit of a bummer because these AO lithium batteries will not fit in that rack. That's obviously my fault. I should have checked it. So it's a big bummer, okay? So the lesson here is if you're gonna buy something, check the dimensions and the specs to make sure it's gonna work, right? That's obvious, right? In this case, made the mistake all right so anyways point is gonna have to think about how we're gonna redo this or rearrange stuff like that so there'll probably be a part two after we get it all situated but i did want to throw this out there just in case somebody was going to think about buying these battery uh, cabinets battery racks with the bus bars for these batteries right so make sure you check that out otherwise hope this video helped you guys out if you have any questions let us know get back to work otherwise have a great day and we'll see you guys next time